The Providence Meeting House and Cemetery in Periopolis, Pennsylvania, is not only home to more than 500 unmarked burial sites, but also local lore of hauntings and death. Officially, the structure is a meeting house rather than a chapel, and the stone structure standing today replaced the initial log building. The meeting house was chartered in 1789 and was in use by the Quakers until the late 1800s. One legend states that a young girl died at the cemetery, and her manner of death is described on the wall of the meeting house. However, if you read this description, the legend states that you will meet the same fate. The cemetery itself has a legend of its own. If you are unlucky enough to step on the right or wrong grave site, you will be followed by bad fortune for an unforeseeable time. Would you burn your dead family if you thought they were vampires? This is the true and strange case of the Jewett City Vampires. Much like Mercy Brown, a family plagued with illness during the 1840s and 1850s pointed fingers at their deceased kin. After the third son in the Ray family, Henry Nelson Ray, fell ill in 1854, the family took action by exhuming the bodies of his father and two brothers and set them ablaze. The monuments still stand in the Jewett City Cemetery in Griswold, Connecticut. Did the body bonfire work and banish the vampiric plague? You can find the answer on Henry's monument with his year of demise marked 1854. The grave of little Margaret. I found someone very special in this Vermont cemetery and I had to know her story. If you're ever visiting Montpelier, you can find little Margaret waiting in the wooded area of her family plot in the Greenmount Cemetery. As soon as I saw her, I wanted to know what happened. I found that Margaret Pitkin was born in 1892 and when she was just seven years old, contracted spinal meningitis. In his grief, her father commissioned a memorial carver to replicate an exact photo of Margaret. He almost didn't pay for the statue due to a missing button. The carver pointed out that the photo showed the missing button as well. She is exact to detail from the ring on her finger to the button on her boots. I was sad to see she no longer had a necklace of pennies, so I hope that this inspires you to go leave a penny at her collar and make her a necklace like she used to have. Black Agnes. It is not a complete adventure without visiting the local cursed grave. A statue of Thanatos, the god of death, affectionately known as Black Agnes, towers the hillside of the Greenmount Cemetery in Montpelier, Vermont. When I visited, a passerby approached me with a dare to sit in the lap of the statue. Upon this action, it is said that you will have a stroke of misfortune or die. Teenagers once thought they had beat the curse, but within a week, one had a broken leg, another wrecked their car, and a third drowned by flipping a canoe. Black Agnes is formally the monument erected in memory of John Erastus Hubbard, who died in 1899. John had fallen from grace after contesting his aunt's will that had left $300,000 to Montpelier, leaving the community feel cheated. On either side of the monument, stanzas from the poem Thanatopsis are carved, including the line, Approach thy grave, like one who wraps drapery of his couch about him and lies down to pleasant dreams. Tafafile, you might have heard or read this term and wondered what it meant. If you like my content, you probably are one. A Tafafile is an individual who is interested in cemeteries, graves, epitaphs, and their histories. They may also be known as a cemetery wanderer or tombstone tourist. Superstition has prevented many from appreciating early funerary art masterpieces like this one. This example belongs to Nathan Baldwin, who died in 1898 and is interred at the Milford Cemetery in Milford, Connecticut. It features a marble woman struck with grief under glass and cornered by four icons, faith, hope, love, and charity. It is speculated that it is a tribute to his daughter who tragically preceded him in death. 